Hello friends, how are you? Hope you all are doing great. I C A Kamakshi Khandilwal welcome you all to my next session in GST. Today I would be discussing about the provisions relating to job work. Like what is the meaning of job work? Who is a job worker? Procedure to send the goods on job work. The provisions relating to the input tax credit. and the transitional provisions so let's start first what is the meaning of job work section 2 clause 68 of the cgst act 2017 defines job work as any treatment or process undertaken by a person on goods belonging to another registered person and the expression job worker shall be construed accordingly now here is an important distinction from the provisions in the current law in excise it says that the goods must belong to a registered person then only the transaction will take the color of the job work so if the goods are sent by an unregistered person that is the principal is unregistered then in such a scenario the transaction would not be termed as a job work so a job worker does not work on its own goods but on the goods supplied to him by another registered person job work has been classified as a service in gst as per clause 3 of schedule 2 it says any treatment or process which is applied to another person's goods is a supply of service this is important as different provisions have been provided for ascertaining the time of supply in respect of goods or time of supply in respect of services and also the place of supply for goods and place of supply for services so with respect to ascertaining my gst liability i would look upon the provisions as applicable to the services now coming over to the next topic what is the procedure to send the goods on job work according to section 143 of the cgst act a registered person here and after referred to as the principal may under intimation and subject to such conditions as may be prescribed send any inputs or capital goods without payment of tax to a job worker for job work so the supply of goods from the principal to job worker is covered under the definition of supply but the principal shall not be liable to pay any tax provided two conditions are satisfied first an intimation has been provided by the principal and second certain conditions as may be prescribed by the government needs to be fulfilled then from there subsequently the goods may be sent from one job worker to another job worker and likewise so at the time of transferring the goods to the job worker the principal has to issue a delivery chalan now it says principal shall bring back the inputs after the completion of job work or otherwise and or capital goods other than molds and dies jigs and fixtures or tools within 1 year and 3 years respectively of their being sent to any office place of business without payment of tax so the inputs can be sent to the job work for 1 year and capital goods can be sent to the job work for 3 years or the principal may supply such inputs after completion of job work or otherwise and or capital goods within 1 year or 3 years from the place of business of the job worker on payment of tax within india or with or without payment of tax for export as the case may be for this the principal must declare the place of business of the job worker as his additional place of business except 
where the job worker is registered under section 25 or where the principal is engaged in the supply of such goods as may be notified by the commissioner in this behalf. Now the responsibility for accounting the inputs and or the capital goods shall lie with the principal. So the principal is responsible for keeping the proper accounts for the goods sent on job work and the turnover of the goods sent on job work shall be added in the aggregate turnover of the principal and not that of the job worker. Now where the inputs or capital goods sent for job work are not received back or are not supplied from the place of business of the job worker within a period of one year or three years then it shall be deemed that such inputs or capital goods had been supplied by the principal to the job worker on the day when the said inputs or capital goods were sent out. Next provision, any waste and scrap generated during the job work may be supplied by the job worker directly from his place of business on payment of tax if such job worker is registered or by the principal if the job worker is not registered. So here is the summarized view of the procedure related to job work. The principal may send the goods to a job worker and from there on to another job worker and the like without payment of tax for one year or three years. For one year in the case of inputs and three years in the case of capital goods. And from there the principal may supply in India on payment of tax or export with or without payment of tax subject to the condition that the principal declares the place of business of the job worker as his additional place of business except where the job worker is registered under section 23 or the principal is engaged in the supply of notified goods. Till date no such goods have been notified by the government. Now coming over to the next point, what are the provisions relating to the input tax credit? Section 19 of the CGST Act says that the principal is allowed to take input tax credit on inputs or capital goods sent to a job worker for job work. ITC is allowed even if the inputs or capital goods are directly sent to a job worker for job work without their being first brought to his place of business. So, this implies that it is not mandatory for the principal to bring the inputs or capital goods first into his premises and then from there on transfer to the job worker. He can directly send the goods to the job worker. Now, in case the inputs or capital goods sent for job work are not received back by the principal or are not supplied from the job worker's place of business within one year or three years, then it shall be deemed that such inputs or capital goods had been supplied by the principal to the job worker on the date when the said inputs were sent out. And the period of one year or three years shall be counted from the date of receipt of inputs or capital goods by the job worker. Now what are the transitional provisions applicable for the job work? Section 141 of the CGST Act, it says that the job worker who is registered under Central Excise, Service Tax or VAT presently to be migrated into GST provisionally, the job workers who need to register for the first time would have to apply afresh and the principal shall, within 90 days of the appointed day, submit an application electronically in form GST TRAN 1, specifying therein the stock or as the case may be, capital goods held by him as a principal at the place or the place of the business of his agents separately, agent-wise or branch-wise. The inputs, semi-finished or the finished goods received by a job worker prior to GST could be returned within six months of the implementation date or extended period of two months without the payment of GST. 
provided both the principal and the job worker have declared such inputs in the form GST TRAN 1 and if the goods are not returned then the ITC would be recovered from the principal. So if any inputs, semi-finished goods or finished goods are sent to a job worker for further processing, testing, repairing etc. before the appointed day that is 1st July 2017 then in such cases no tax shall be payable by the person returning the goods provided that the goods are returned within 6 months by the job worker from the appointed day or unless additional 2 months have been granted manufacturer and the job worker both must declare such goods in form GST TRAN 1 point number 9 within 90 days from the appointed date. If the goods are not returned then the ITC availed by the manufacturer or inputs shall be liable to be recovered under section 142 subsection 8 clause A. Now let us understand with, the, with this with the help of three case studies. Case 1 the goods are returned within a period of 6 months or extended period then no tax shall be payable. Case 2 the goods are not returned within a period of 6 months or extended period then in such case the input tax credit shall be recovered from the person who had removed such goods. Case 3 transferred directly within a period of 6 months or extended period the goods can be transferred to another registered taxable person on payment of GST or the goods can be exported out of India without the payment of taxes in accordance with the provisions of the earlier law. So this finishes up with the provisions relating to the job work. Hope you all found the content useful. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel CA Kamakshi Khandelwal for more videos on GST. Thank you. Have a nice day.